Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 4, Section 6 in McDougall and Tell's 8th grade textbook entitled Rules of Exponents. On the left side of the board, you'll find the Product of Powers Property Rule. The Product of Powers Property Rule says to multiply powers with the same base, we add their exponents. multiply powers with the same base, we add their exponents. Now, you may have, in this time we have not covered powers or have forgotten what the parts of a power are, which is also what you see on the left column of the board. Okay? You can see I've gotten three to the fourth written here. Okay? The whole thing is called the power. Three is the base and four is the exponent. So we're talking about this rule when the bases are the same. So the big numbers would both have to be threes if I was looking at this number in this type of problem. But that's what we're talking about. So all they're saying, the only thing they're saying is, if I'm multiplying two things with the same base, instead of figuring both of them out, I can add the exponents together and just figure it out once. Look at how this works. Okay, which is what you see in the proof column there. We've got 5 squared times 5 cubed. Now, I could, if I wanted to, find 5 squared and find 5 cubed. 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed is 125. And when I multiply those together, I get 31 .5. That's one option. If you use the rule, though, <coughs> you can just add these two exponents together since these are both 5s. 2 plus 3 makes 5. So this is the same as 5 to the 5th. Well, 5 to the 5th is also 3125. So you can save yourself a lot of work because you can do it all in just one step. Now, what if I give you a long problem? Let's say it was 3 to the 1st times 3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 7th times 3 to the 9th times 3 to the 11th times 3 to the 13th. You don't want to figure all those out and then have to multiply them together. You could just add the exponents all up in one shot and figure it out in one go. Okay. Which is where the property really pays off. All right, so let's try it over here. Not difficult. Example one. X to the fourth times X to the seventh. All right, so again, the rules, the bases are the same. They're both X. So we just add the exponents. So we have to add the 4 and the 7 together. 4 plus 7 makes 11. 11. So this is x to the 11. Done. This is easy. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Okay. Let's try the next one. 2 to the 3rd times 2 squared. The big numbers are both 2, so we can just add the exponents together. So 3 plus 2 is 5. five. five so this is 2 to the 5th. Now, you can simplify 2 to the 5th, though. Not a, hard, not a hard thing to simplify. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. Do we have to do this? Yes. But you can use a calculator to do it. So, that shouldn't be too bad. Now. Yes? Okay, you know, like on example 3, it says 3 the second, x to the second. Would that be a time when the 3 to the second, right. x to the second? Okay. Yes. All right, example three now, I'm putting both things in the same problem. You've got plain old bases that are numbers, and you've got bases that are uh, variables. Three squared x squared times three x cubed. Three squared x squared times three x cubed. All right, so what I want to do in this problem is I want to put the three things together first and put the x things together. All right, commutative property multiplication says if it's a big multiplication problem, I can change the order around and still get the same result. So I'm going to change the order. 3 squared, and I want to put it with the 3, times 3, times the x squared, times x cubed. So the only thing I did from the first step to that step, or from the original problem to the first step, is I just switch the order around. Nothing else changed. All right, now, 
x squared and x cubed, you can do that. You already know that x squared and x cubed is going to make x to the fifth. fifth. Good. Now, 3 squared and 3 right, might be a little bit difficult if you're not thinking about it. 3 has to be treated like it has an exponent. So that would be 3 to the first, exactly. So if you need to, put a little 1 there. Just remember, 3 to the first would just equal 3, which is why that works. Now we add the exponents. So 3 to the second times 3 to the first is 3 to the third. 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 Adding the exponents. Now 3 to the third, we can simplify it and we'll finish it. 3 times 3 is? 9. Times 3 again is? 27. There you go. All right. Quotient of powers rule. Now, this really isn't going to be a surprise to you. If in a multiplication problem, we add the exponents, in a division problem, we're going to? Subtract. Right, we're going to subtract. If in a multiplication problem, we're putting together by adding, in a division problem, yeah, we're going to subtract. That's what the rule says. To divide powers with the same non-zero base, Subtract the exponents. To divide powers with the same non-zero base, subtract the exponents. All right. Underneath that, you see the proof. Real simple problem. 2 to the third divided by 2 to the first. Now, you can figure out both of those in your head. I understand. That's why I'm giving you an easy proof. All right, 2 to the third would be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 2 to the first would be 2. And when I do 8 divided by 2, I get 4. That's the correct solution. The rule says, though, I can just subtract the exponents. So I can just do 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I would have 2 squared. And you know that 2 times 2 is also Four. So it works. So let's take that rule and do the right side of the examples here. <coughs> 